I have been asked today to speak about probation and parole, and there are a number of things that might be helpful to people who encounter that. Essentially, probation and parole are the same thing. Uh, one of them is, if you will, a substitute for a, another sentence. That's probation. And parole is part of the original sentence, the way parole works. You serve a minimum sentence, and once you are released from that, you are placed on parole for the rest of your sentence. Both of them are involve supervision. Uh, supervision normally by a county or a state parole officer. There's a lot about that that um, needs attention if you're about to get into that situation. The difference between the two is that if you violate your probation or parole, meaning you don't follow whatever rules the probation department or the judge has placed on you, there's a consequence. The consequence can be that you start your probation all over again. Or in the event of a, a probation violation, if you violate it, the judge can actually resentence you for whatever the probation term was, uh, all the way up to the maximum sentence for that charge. What do we need to know about probation? Probation is something that's designed to help you uh, if you've served some part of a sentence or if this is your whole sentence. Help you in the sense of kind of looking after you, maybe almost a parental type of thing. That's the ideal. What in fact often happens is that probation officers who are pretty dramatically overworked um, sometimes aren't able to spend time thinking about what you really need and what we should do for you as opposed to someone else. And instead, they are put in a position where pretty much all they can do is enforce the rules. Pretty much without exception, probation and parole officers really would like to see you succeed, uh, although not all of them are really able and in some cases even not willing to help you succeed. So bear in mind that their goal is to get you through this without you having any problems, without you violating the rules. There are a lot of uh, difficulties with that. For instance, if you are, depending upon your ethnic background, depending upon your upbringing, where you're from, and how you grew up seeing things, um, it, it may be difficult to interact with your probation officer. Try to think about that. Try to get yourself in a position where you can understand what that person is saying to you, why they're saying it, and whether or not you're gonna be able to do what they want you to do. And if for some reason you can't, let them know that. Make sure they understand what it is that's a problem for you. You should also know that if you are on probation or parole, and if you are cooperative from the very beginning, um, often the length of the probation or parole, or the severity of it, if you will, meaning the, the strictness of the rules, kind of subsides over time. You might have to be reporting in once or twice a week when you first start, and by the end of six months or a year, you'll probably be down to maybe once or twice a month. That will happen if they know they can trust you, if they know that you're working with them as part of this program. Don't resent it. Um, judges make decisions, if you think about it, um, in, in, a, in the case of a criminal sentence, um, if it was a guilty plea, the judge has probably spent about four or five or maybe 10 minutes with you um, at the time of the entry of your guilty plea and maybe a similar period of time um, at the time of your sentencing. So 
this is not somebody who has had the ability to sit with you, talk with you, get a feel for who you are. This is somebody who is doing the best he or she can to do something fair for you. But at the same time, they rely heavily on information they get from others, which brings me to one more topic. Um, before most judges will sentence you on any charge, um, they require something which Pennsylvania calls a pre-sentence investigation, um, meaning you meet with somebody from the probation department, that person does a pretty thorough background check on you, and that includes your criminal history, your medical history, your educational background, your employment record. Um, they put all that together in a fairly lengthy report which goes to the judge before your sentencing. So please bear in mind that the individual who is writing that lengthy report will also have some effect on what happens with respect to your overall sentence and bear that in mind. And by that, I would simply suggest, no matter how difficult it is under the circumstances, it's always a good idea to acknowledge if you're actually pleading guilty to something or have been convicted, it's a good idea to take responsibility for what you've, been, what you've agreed that you're guilty of and uh, express some remorse. Many times people are charged with things they don't even know at the time are going to be criminal. So just think about that when you are interacting with your probation officer. Just understand that it's a period of time in your life when you don't really have total control over what's going to happen and how it happens and where it happens and so forth and many times who with it happens. You may be involved with an individual who was also involved in the crime, either a co-defendant or a victim or something like that. During your period of probation and parole, you're, you're not going to be allowed normally to have contact with that person. So try, try to get that to be something that you're comfortable with. And if it really isn't something you are comfortable with or you feel you can't comply, talk to your probation or parole officer. Explain that. They're human. They have ears. They'll hear you. And hopefully they will agree to change something. But if they don't, follow through with what has to be done.